And joining us now, Rick Davis is a CBSN political contributor and Republican strategist. He was also campaign manager for John McCain in 2008. Linda Tran in Washington. She's a Democratic strategist and founding partner of 270 Strategies. And here on set, Nick Thompson, a CBS News contributor and editor of NewYorker.com. And of course, Anthony Salvanto, our CBS News election director. Okay, Rick. We know that right now Gary Johnson's polling in the single digits. He missed the cutoff to make the debates, which could have gotten him millions more eyeballs. Sure. What's his role in this race? Well, I think he talks a little bit about it in the interview tonight, but I, I think he's trying to give himself to be the option to two incredibly unpopular major party candidates. Uh, when you look at the polling around Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, they are two of the most unpopular candidates mm -hmm. nominated in modern polling history. Uh, you know, over 60 percent or right around that of the voters think that they have an unfavorable impression of those two major party candidates. So I think he hangs around the hoop and tries to draw in those people who are disaffected Republicans, Democrats, and the majority of which will be independents or libertarians from his own party. Anthony, these people who vote for third party candidates, are they absolutely in love with these candidates or is this a protest vote? Well, it's somewhat of a mix of both, and that's that's the truth about any voting decision. Sometimes you settle for a candidate and you figure you want one who might be able to win. But with, with third parties in general, when you ask people, do you want a third party candidate, most of them say, yes, we want somebody to run, somebody else to run. And that's true no matter what the election is. And then you ask, would you vote for one? You get a sizable number say that they would, but then third party candidates often get in the single digits, which is where we see Gary Johnson right now. And part of the reason for that is they have to establish that they can win. Because what people want at the end of the day is to have their vote you know, matter in that sense, in terms of a winner. But what your question about a protest vote is a good one because it can also matter, and it can matter a lot to you, to send a message. And they can also feel like they're sending a message by making that choice, and that's the calculus that he's got to straddle, really. He's got to be, in fact, in fact both. So it doesn't matter, even if he doesn't have a chance, these vo voters feel that they've got a vote and they want it to count, even if it doesn't mean their candidate's going to make it to the White House. For some, for some. In, the, in general, when you see third party candidates, even when they underperform their polls, it's often we find because voters went to the polls and said, well, I want somebody who's going to be in the mix. If they don't think, you know, they see the polls too, they watch shows like this and they think, okay, so he's not, he's not really necessarily going to get over that 50% line, so what can I do with my vote out of somebody who is? But having said that, yes, there is going to be a sizable number of people who say, this is my way of expressing that I don't like these candidates candidates and that I do want to send a message, even if this person doesn't win, that they still get a sizable number, that should be a, sh a shock to the system. You will see that. Nick, we know that Hillary Clinton is struggling when it comes to millennials, and we know a lot of millennials like third-party candidates. They do. What do you see this millennials and younger the younger vote shaping up in this election? Well, a lot of them are going to are voting for Johnson, right? A fairly large amount of his supporters are millennials, right? He is pulling some of the Bernie Sanders voters, and he is appealing very directly to the Bernie Sanders voters. I mean, the funny thing about Gary Johnson is, if you were to come up with an election and a scenario where a libertarian candidate like Johnson could do well, this is. It. This is great for him. The Republican Party is throwing tomatoes at everybody. They're looking for somebody who was a Republican is now shifted to the Libertarian Party. Young people don't like the Democratic candidate. They love the sort of drug legalization, you know, um, pro-abortion stance of Gary Johnson. He's a Republican who has a lot of their views and now a Libertarian. So if he were a better candidate and if he sounded better when he talked and if he seemed smarter and if he was more charismatic, he could actually do really well in this election. He's kind of... He's not missing a layup, but he's missing the best opportunity the Libertarians have ever had. Which takes us to an interesting moment. You, we all remember Gary Johnson's slip-up when he was asked, what is Aleppo? That gaffe was from earlier this month, and Steve Croft actually asked him about that. Let's listen in. You've been on the front page a lot this month. You made a big splash, and it was a belly flop. We're talking about Aleppo here. Sure. Tell me about sure. Aleppo. I mean, how did that happen? Well, uh, I, I blame no one but myself. Um, I understand the underlying policy. People have said, this guy's not qualified to be president if he doesn't know what Aleppo is. How do you react to that? Well, uh, that, that I am human, uh, that I have a filter, and it starts with honesty, it starts with the truth, it starts with transparency, um, and would serve as president uh, in that capacity. Um, when I was asked the question, the first thing that came into my mind was, this is an acronym, Aleppo, uh, American. Did it sound familiar to you? 
Well, it didn't, or, or I think I would have been. But, but look, and I do not in any way want to make an excuse for myself. You know, so many people have said, look, 90% of America doesn't know Aleppo. Well, 90% of America is not running for president of the United States. Exactly. No excuse. But at, right. the, no excuse. at the end of the day, this is just my view, is Aleppo is a very important place name, but it's a place name. Does that mean they're disqualified from running for president? I mean, you'd have very few people at the debates if that sort of thing was a disqualify, disqualification to run. So, Linda, one thing about that gap, it certainly got Johnson a lot of airtime. Could that have actually helped him by boosting his name recognition? And do people care that a candidate doesn't know where Aleppo is? I think it, it, name recognition is absolutely important. The problem is if people recognize that he his name because of a problem that's significant as him not knowing one of the most major international conflicts that's going on right now, I think that's problematic for him. At the end of the day, as we've been talking about a ton over the past several months, people not only have to be able to vote against something, they have to have something to vote for. And I think the problem for Gary Johnson is at the end of the day, people don't really know what they're voting for. You know, as Nick pointed out on the one hand, you know, he's a guy who's been CEO of a, a marijuana advocacy organization organization and so that might be appealing to some of the millennials but on the other hand he was a Republican governor and so that's something that might be appealing to some other Republicans but who actually knows that we're discussing that here because you know it happens to be the thing that we're obsessed with day in and day out but most people I think are just going to be faced with a choice between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump and that's at what you know at the end of the day where they're going to go Linda which candidate do you think is more likely to draw away those Gary Johnson supporters you know, I think that uh, the latest polls that we've seen show that, that he's probably drawing away in certain battleground states uh, a segment of both Trump voters and Clinton voters. But again, he was a Republican, and it is much more likely, I think, that if he's going to be a spoiler, he's going to be a spoiler on the Trump side of the aisle. Rick, the New Hampshire Union leader endorsed Gary Johnson last week. Uh, it was the first time in a century that they've actually backed uh, backed a Republican nominee. What do you make of that? How significant is that? Well, backed somebody Excuse other me, than a Republican yes. nominee. Yeah, I, I remember getting uh, in 2008 the, the 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 endorsement for John McCain, and it was a really big plus for us, even though we got beat by 15 points in New Hampshire. Um, but uh, look, I think this is part of what is the uh, situation with this current election, right? Even the the news media is unhappy with the two choices they have for major party uh, candidates. And I think part of what we, we're seeing is a phenomenon. I, I would say the, the chase to see who is hurt most by them undermines their ability to grow because it's not about them. It's about what they're hurting the major party candidates. And we do have a racket in the United States, right? It's all geared toward major party candidates, the two Republican and Democratic candidates. The reason that they're not in this debate is because the debate commission, which is a totally unelected group of people who sit around and meddle in politics. Yeah. Well, independent, except it's made up of Republicans and Democrats. There are any independents on that commission. And they make you know, decisions on, oh, you gotta have 15% nationally to get on a debate. There's no reason why they couldn't uh, participate in one debate, not three debates, or you know, have a separate debate that includes them and let the major party candidates decide whether they want to attend. I do think that, that, that part of what their campaign can do is bring light to the fact that we really don't give an even break to these third party campaigns and and maybe in the future you know start a debate that uh, maybe open up the process a little bit. Anthony you look at the history of the spoiler effect of third party candidates do you think that that could happen in this election? Uh, you know third party candidates typically don't get what they've been polling and what ends up happening is there's some studies that have shown that they get about half of where they are so if that happens again, you know, the thing to look at here is, you know, Linda said this, and I think she's right. In the polling, we see conservatives going more for Johnson, uh, liberals much less so. Mm. Having said that, though, young voters, and I think you mentioned this too, and I, I agree, I see it in the polling, younger voters are more drawn toward Gary Johnson. It is definitely part of the protest. And then you think about what the sensitivity is among each of these candidates. And Rick, with respect to that point where we're talking about who they're drawing from, and I'm about to do that, but, but you know, Hillary Clinton is especially sensitive with those young people because she needs the high turnout. She needs people under 30 to do for her what they did for President Obama. And if she doesn't get that, and she doesn't get it in large numbers, even a small draw over to, to Gary Johnson could end up hurting her even if the numbers are disproportionately toward Trump. Okay, we hope you guys will stick around. We're going to have much more 